bonjourni how sa swikal salam namaste welcome to my channel i'm divya from the storytellers puri and here is your story this is the story of young eckhart a mouse he had quick tiny feet shiny black eyes and an extra long tail eckhart lived with his family in a place called rose valley prince edward island This is also a story of a great mystery a mystery which all mice in Rose Valley talked about but which was never solved until the day Eckhart set off to his great adventure It was the time when he boldly went where no mouse had gone before and discovered the true meaning of Crumfest For Eckhart and the other mice every year was divided into two parts the outside part and the inside part during the long warm days they lived in a snug burrow beneath the spruce tree in the corner of the field next to the woods but when the days became shorter and the great snows came they left outside and moved inside between those walls of the big farmhouse where the people lived the mice of course didn't refer to them as people they called them the street ones because of the way they walked Eckhart didn't like going inside. None of the mice did. The narrow space between the walls where they spent the winters was a cold, dismal place. There was no grass there or trees or flowers and no sunshine. The inside was also a hungrier place. There was plenty of food in the house, but at night, the only time when it was safe to go searching, it was almost always shut up in the little pantry of the kitchen. in the jars or tins with tight covers the only spot the mice could find food was on the kitchen floor underneath the big wooden table where the people ate there would usually be a few crumbs there tiny bits of bread or biscuit which had tumbled down from above but there was one time of the year when all that changed every year in late december Just a few weeks after the mice had moved inside, a most astonishing thing happened. Suddenly, as if by magic, there were crumbs everywhere. For several days, the mice feasted not just on bread and biscuit, but on cake and cookie and pie crust. The mice had named this time of abundance. They called it the Crumb Fest. and over years it became the most important celebration in the mice society happy crumb fest they would call out to one another as they scurried in and out of their hole in the wall bringing back loads and loads of tasty morsels the young mice like eckhart who had been born outside during the summer had only heard stories of the crumb fest and so they looked forward to it with almost unbearable excitement Is it really as crummy as they say? Eckhart asked his mother. Oh yes, dear. It is the crummiest time of the whole year. Eckhart's grandfather, a skinny, bent old mouse named Thomas, had lived longer than any of the other mice. He had celebrated three crumb fests, and Eckhart asked him once why it happened every year. Old Thomas said he didn't know. He said it was a mystery. When Eckhart asked him a second time, He twitched his tail in annoyance. Don't ask so many questions, he said crossly. Crumb fest happens, and that's all there is. Just be thankful and don't waste your time trying to know things that mice can never know. I'm warning you, Master Eckhart. He added in a serious voice. If you ask too many questions, you may just ruin it for yourself and everyone else. Eckhart felt puzzled and hurt. You see, he didn't like to upset his grandfather. But he just wasn't satisfied with the old mouse's answer. Eckhart, you see, was a most curious creature. Most curious indeed. Indeed, his mother had told him once that his curiosity was just as long as his tail, and that one day would get him into big trouble. The truth is, Eckhart had some doubts about Crumbfest. He thought maybe it was just a story the old mice had made up to help them pass the time during the long inside days. He once told his little sister Mavis that there was no such thing as Crumbfest, and she burst into tears. <laughs> Eckhart, you are a hateful, horrid brother. 
But then one day just when Eckhart was beginning to feel certain that he was right the crumbs appeared It was amazing absolutely amazing the word spread quickly between the walls They were right They were right They were right Everyone was saying The crumbs are here Eckhart had never seen such excitement everyone was happy even Thomas who hardly ever smiled seemed to be in a good mood and no one was more joyous than Eckhart His dark little eyes were shining with delight as mouse after mouse came scampering back through the hole in the wall cheeks bulging with delicious holiday curries But all of that just made Eckhart even more curious On the second day of the crumb fest as he sat chewing on a big sticky raisin he started thinking about the reason for the most mysterious event Right then and there he decided he must solve this riddle He made up his mind to go exploring When he told some of the other mice about his intentions they looked at him in astonishment and his friend Martin told him he was crazy Everyone said it was just too dangerous When grandfather Thomas heard about Eckhart's plan he shook his head and said scoldingly You stubborn little scallywag How long is it going to take you to learn your place in this world? I've told you over and over that mice are creatures of the outside and that we are not meant to know the secrets of the inside. Besides, there is too much danger in it. It's too risky, far too risky. These young mice these days don't understand your reality. Old Tom has dropped his head and continued muttering in his whiskers. It seemed he had forgotten all about Eckhart and was talking to himself. Without saying a word, Eckhart left the old mouse. He scurried to the hole in the wall and out into the kitchen. It was the middle of the night and the room was quite dark, but there was a moon outside and it shone through the windows, giving Eckhart just enough light to see where he was going. It was all very quiet. You see, it was the night after Christmas and all through the house not a creature was stirring. except a cut the little mouse he passed beneath the great wooden table this was familiar territory and he paused for a moment to decide where he would go from there he looked across the room and saw a door leading into the hallway beyond that was the unknown and perhaps the secret of crumfest he knew that was where he must go as he passed through the doorway he could feel his heart pounding He moved slowly at first. But then scampered across the mat and came to another door. He stopped and peered inside, twitching his nose, for he had become aware of a familiar scent in the air. In front of him was a wide room with a shiny floor. There was a very large object near the door, something he had never seen before. He scampered underneath and poked his head out the other side. And that was when he saw it. Eckhart could scarcely believe his eyes. He looked again, but sure enough it was still there. It was a tree, a fir tree. A beautiful tree from the outside was right there in front of him. On the inside. Eckhart ran over quickly and looked up into the branches. There on the tree were other things from the outside. There was a long string of red berries, you know the kind that grow on rose bushes along the fence, and some birds. They didn't look exactly like birds he had seen outside, but they were definitely birds. They were sitting very still in the branches. It was all very surprising and strange, and something told Eckhart that it must have something to do with Crumfest, though he wasn't sure what. There was a small table beside the tree and Eckhart ran quickly up one of the legs to get a better view. When he came up over the top, there was another great surprise waiting for him. There, gathered together in a circle, were tiny animals from the outside. There were two cows, a horse with long ears and several sheep. There were also some tiny people there and right in the middle, a little box with a baby sleeping in some straw. 
Eckhart walked slowly and stood beside one of the sheep, which was exactly the same size as he was. He remained there quietly for a few moments, standing just as still as the other animals. And that's when it happened. Eckhart felt something he had never felt before. It started somewhere inside of him and spread out right to the very tips of all his whiskers and to the end of his extra long tail. It wasn't exactly astonishment. And it wasn't exactly joy. It was wonder. That's what it was. Eckhart felt wonderful. It only lasted a short time, but Eckhart knew in that moment that he had discovered the meaning of Crumfest. It came to him in a flash. He knew his journey was over. It was now time to go back to the other mice and tell them his story. He scampered down the floor and with one last look at the tree, ran quickly. Across the shiny floor, under the large object, out through the other door, across the mat, out the other door, under the great table where the crumbs were, and into the hole in the corner. When he arrived back between the walls, the other mice could tell immediately that something sensational had happened. Eckhart had been away for half an hour, which is quite a long time for a mouse. And he looked different. Soon they all gathered around him. Where have you been? They asked. What have you seen? Even Grandfather Thomas, looking especially interested, came close enough to hear. Eckhart told them the story of his journey. He told them about the big room, the tree, the berries and the birds. And when he got to the part about the animals, he lowered his head, straightened his tail and said softly, The mystery of the Crumfest is the mystery of the outside and the inside. When the outside comes inside, it is a special time. But when the outside and the inside are together, Crumfest happens. For a moment, no one spoke. Most of the mice looked puzzled and Thomas scowled. But there were a few whose eyes opened very wide as though they had just heard a secret which they already knew. In the years that followed, the story of Eckhart's adventure was passed down from generation to generation. The telling and retelling of the tale became an important part of the Crumfest celebrations. Most of the mice still didn't go further than the crumbs beneath the table. But there were a few who followed Eckhart's trail through the doorway. Like Eckhart, they experienced for themselves the mystery of the Crumfest and the wonderful place where the inside and the outside are together. The name of today's story is The True Meaning of Crumfest by David Biel. And the story sounds very simple, but there is a profound hidden meaning to it. It talks about bringing the outside and the inside together. But what is this outside? Who are these outsiders? It is anything and everything that we consider not a part of us, different from us, and that we do not trust. And who falls into this category? In today's age, it is everybody. Be people of different races, castes, creed, religious backgrounds, different political views, different sexual orientations, genders, even age. We can't even trust blood today. That's what's happening. But why all this hatred and mistrust? Yes, I know there are a lot of people around us who are doing a lot of bad things. But we need to stop this whataboutism. What about this guy? Why doesn't that guy do something? What about our problems first? Let them deal with theirs. Stop this what about is it? We are all a part of this world and we all need to contribute towards a solution. Try to be kind and do it in silence, not for a claim. Just the other day I was watching a Bollywood movie and over there there was a dialogue which says, Jo dunya kare wo hypocrisy, jo hum kare wo dunya dari. Why do we look at the world in a different light than we look at ourselves? Be kind. If you have more than you need, build a larger table not high offenses. It's high time we break this fortress that we build around our hearts and give people a chance. People make mistakes. Forgive, overlook, treat them the way you would treat yourself. Let the outside in. It's high time.
let me know what your thoughts are leave it in the comment section below and i'll see you again with another story next monday till then take care bye bye